welcome back i wanted to do a video today on something that's been really inspiring me lately which i'm sure you know if you love fashion or have been on youtube watching a few videos nowadays you know what i'm talking about and that is autumn dressing or fall dressing i used to live in california so i never actually got the opportunity to wear you know big baggy jumpers and things like that and coats so naturally when i first moved to london three years ago i went a little bit overboard and I remember going through a phase where, you know, my commute from the office to home used to go through Oxford Street. So I'd just pop into H&M and other stories, things like that, and go to the sales racks and just like pick out things. To be honest, it did give me a lot of satisfaction. I collected a lot of sweaters and coats and things that I wasn't able to wear back then in a very short amount of time. But I think in recent years, I've found that, or past year actually i have just found that i didn't actually have a wardrobe that had a good foundation so when it came to dressing in the morning or dressing for an occasion or something like that i just didn't know where to start because my wardrobe didn't have rhyme or reason to it for this year i wanted to become a little bit more mindful in terms of my shopping not necessarily becoming a minimalist but in that sense just because i think i get so much enjoyment out of fashion that to just have a capsule wardrobe isn't achievable for me but the things that i want to do is definitely become a little bit more mindful about it a bit more aware of the things that i'm adding to my wardrobe and consequently hopefully cutting down my spending and frivolous purchases during lockdown i would say i would come up with a list of things that i wanted to purchase the second that i got paid so every single purchase would be for the next month so i just kind of wanted to talk you through this process what i actually purchased recently and what i still have on my wish list so yeah let's get started so this list that i curate what really gives me kind of gratification of making a list is just kind of writing it down the process of writing it down really satisfies me for some reason because I feel like I'm putting it down on paper, I'm making a plan to purchase it and it actually brings me a lot of joy and excitement when I do actually get these pieces more so than you know if I just ran into H&M or and other stories really quickly and gone, gone like it's on sale I'm just gonna buy it you know like it that moment passes so much quicker than if you actually planned and allocated some funds to it. Lately I've done a little bit of shopping they definitely have been on my wish list for years at a time. I just had the opportunity to acquire them at a cheaper price. So that's why I kind of bought them a bit quicker. And then the others are on my wish list for next month. In terms of new in, the first thing that I purchased was actually back in March, but I'm going to be able to wear it now. It's these Philippa K Navy trousers. If you can see, <laughs> I'll put a picture from the website on the screen right now but this is called the julie trouser i saw this first on shot from the street so lizzie hadfield she was talking about her favorite trousers and i've always been on the lookout for trousers but it's a bit difficult for me because my thighs and my butt is larger than the rest of my body so i'm bottom heavy and with trousers it seems like if it's too baggy on the waist and too tight on the bum it looks a little bit weird so i've always been kind of unsure as to what kind of style of trouser I would suit and what would look flattering and make me feel good about myself in and after a spontaneous trip to the thrift store I found out that carrot shaped trousers actually suit me quite well because they do tend to flare out a little bit on top but then taper down at the bottom so I found that these trousers were amazing in terms of fit on me i bought it in march because it, they had a lockdown sale of 30 percent off so i bought it back then knowing that i wouldn't be able to wear it until autumn so i actually wore it for the very first time yesterday and had a great time and then i actually bought this yesterday this is just a huge huge jumper from h&m um and i saw it on emma hill actually um very 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 long ago but it just wasn't available on the website but i just thought for 18 pounds this jumper looked really good and i actually found it in store so i just snagged it if i were ordering online i would usually go for a medium or a large in sweaters just because i like it more oversized um but this i actually got it in a small because it's very very foxy and the drop shoulder i think also gives a lot more um forgiving in terms of the room just because you know 
there's a lot more space over here and it's not really choking on your armpit per se. I think it is a staple just because it is a really, really understated pattern. A stripe is kind of, you know, you see it a lot in French dressing or Scandinavian dressing. I've got quite a lot of shoes. Um, I do have a little bit of a shoe problem. Right now, what I'm going to show you is three pairs of shoes and I have a fourth one coming in from America. It sounds like a lot, but this is kind of what I'm trying to stick to, just five pairs of shoes for the entire seasons. So autumn, winter season. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that this will work out for me. So the first pair of boots that I got were actually these Stort Weitzman Lowland boots. As you can see from the color, it's a really, really rich, it's turning up a little bit more rust on camera, but it's actually a true kind of deep wood brown. I'm just going to hold one of them up and talk about it. I found these at TK Maxx and I think it was like the best thing that happened to me all month. I was just shopping with my friend. She was looking for some cute outfits for her new godson and she wanted to go into TK Maxx to have a look and at first I was just like okay yeah I'll just browse the candle section whatever like doesn't really matter but then I walked past the shoe sh section and saw these and I was like are you kidding <laughs> like I've been looking for a pair of over-the-knee boots from Stuart Weizmann because I have two other pairs I have another black pair and a green pair that I've had for four years and three years respectively I just love them so much that I wanted to add another pair to my wardrobe I wanted either a gray or a brown pair but I was airing a bit closer to the brown pair just because I like warmer tones and yeah, I just I found them <laughs> and they were marked down from 798 pounds to 249 pounds So it was a lot of money I think in terms of just shoes But I thought because I got so much wear out of the other two pairs which I paid full price for I am going to do myself a favor if I just got these ahead of time and get the more wear out of um, for years to come really so this is the first pair of boots that I got. And then another pair of boots that I got was were these from Paris, Texas. These are a pair of knee-high heeled. I think this is a three-inch heel, so the 80 millimeter is what it says on the website. Crop print boots. My rationale behind these boots is that I really wanted a pair of dressier, more grown-up boots. I just turned 26 a week ago, and I just thought, you know, it's about time that I wear something that was a little bit more sophisticated when I went out you know for dinners and things like that and I just was missing this in my wardrobe I have a lot of combat boots a lot of flat black boots I really don't have a pair of like really elegant really sexy boots you know so I just wanted a pair and I knew that I was going to get a lot of wear out of this because of the color but when I wear something a bit warmer I just feel a bit cozier I don't know if that makes any sense at all but yeah I just really wanted a pair of brown um, knee-high heeled boots and I'm actually on the hunt for a black pair as well these fit true to size but I did size up one size just to fit my calves my calves are athletic athletic slash wider so I just wanted a little bit more room just to stuff my feet in so that I don't look like I'm cutting off my circulation to be honest so they are loose but once you wear a little chunky sock or a thicker sock inside it fits completely the calf circumference by the way for the size 31 I think is around 15 centimeters so definitely no no sorry 15 inches so definitely keep that in mind when you're buying these knee-high boots is that even though they will give a little bit it's not going to give a lot um so either you have to size up or you can wear them kind of to the knee and have a scrunch look which i think looks quite nice as well great and then the last pair of shoes that i have um, in my possession to show you is this pair of acne studios trainers i believe they're called the stefan um but i'm not really sure so this is what it looks like i'm just going to hold one up and show you i've been eyeing these for years i think when they first came out and i showed my friend she was like don't buy them you look like orthopedic shoes but I've loved them for years and years and I just thought, you know, maybe this is the time and actually my boyfriend very kindly bought these for me for my birthday. Every single detail about this shoe I love and I love white trainers. I think everybody can agree that this is a wardrobe staple. I have a pair of Common Projects that I've worn regularly now for three-ish years and they are bursting at the seams a little bit, things are falling apart. So I just wanted a little bit of a replacement and a slightly different look than the Common Projects. If you know what they are, they're really, really streamlined and sleek. But yeah, I just love the color contrast. These two are different colors. This is a 
gum sole that's kind of in a milk color and then this is kind of a very very stark white and then this also has kind of perforated dots over here as details kind of like the nike shoes do and the velcro has really nice detailing it has acne studios it shows over here and then the signature smiley face at the very end over here as well oh also sorry another detail that i really really love is this gum sole that leaks onto the top over here i think it just adds so much dimension to the shoe and it adds a little bit of interest as well to an otherwise quite basic quite plain chunky white trainer i love i wore this yesterday with these trainers with my philippa k trousers which gave it a little bit of a scrunch top the trousers kind of fell over the trainers a little bit which just gave it such a casual look that i loved great and then the last thing that is coming on its way is a pair of mark fisher booties i bought them during the nordstrom anniversary sale which i used to shop when i lived in america but now that i don't i still like to just peruse online and see what they're up to and doing I wanted the Dear Francis ones for years and years, but those are, I believe, 540 pounds. And to me, it just isn't really something that I'm willing to spend my money on because of the style. It is a more casual style, but it has a heel. So to me, it's a little bit in between. Like I can't wear it in a very, very dressy occasion like I could the Paris, Texas boots, but I also, in terms of day-to-day -day wear, isn't really well-versed enough to wear a heeled boot if that makes sense so i just didn't want to spend that much money on it if i wasn't going to get a lot of wear out of it but i did want to dip into that style a little bit and um, great and then moving on to things that i want well aware that you know my impulse trips to another stories in h&m and all of the jumpers that i bought over the years they're still fine some of them just need debobbling but i still am trying to wear them and incorporate them into my nowadays wardrobe but there is a one jumper that I absolutely love and it's from Arquette and it's an oversized wool jumper I'll put it here with a kind of u-shaped neckline in the color mole which is kind of a grayish beigeish brown which I just love it's kind of the combination of a muted color palette that I love but also the warm tones that I mentioned that I really gravitate towards yeah that's one of the jumpers that I love and in terms of the detailing I really wanted to talk about this because I think over the years of my jumper buying, I kind of realized what I like and what I don't like within a jumper and not all jumpers are made the same. The issue actually that I have mainly is usually the neck cuff. So kind of like this collar that you can see that goes like this, like this. This I love. I, this kind of detailing I feel like really elongates the neck just because it shows this part a little bit more. Whether or not that's just me and like my overthinking, I don't know, but to, to me, I just love that. And then the other thing that I loved about it was that it was a normal knit, but then at the cuffs, it also had the same vertical stitching detailing as um, the collar, which I thought was really consistent and really high-end. A lot of high-end kind of jumper makers, for example, Totem, Joseph, things like that, they have these kinds of details that really just elevate the look of a jumper. If you go to a regular high street store and you buy, you know, a regular looking jumper, those are the details that are probably usually missed in the production line. Another thing is definitely the materials. Something that I've not really liked about Anna's stories lately is the kind of springy, stretchy feel of the materials of the knitwear. To me, that is very soft, yes, but it just feels a little bit springy and plasticky. And it, after a while of wearing it over the years, I felt it being a little bit uncomfortable and I not exactly breathable well. So that's another thing that I really look for in jumpers is definitely the material. For example, these kinds of fisherman knits, I really, really enjoy just because it is still stretchy, but then the ones that have very, very fine knit but are stretchy. If you stretch it enough, you can actually see the sheen of the plastic strings running through. That just really, really irks me nowadays, so I just steer clear of that completely. Definitely personal preference though. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was also from Arquette that I want to buy, and it's an oversized wool cardigan. This one is also very long, so I think it comes down to around mid-thigh. I plan on getting this in either a medium or a large. I definitely have to go into store and just put it against my body to see it, because right now you can't try clothes on. But yeah, I just want something that's a little bit longer. I do like the look of it kind of cutting off right around the mid-thigh area. It makes your body look a bit longer as well, and your legs a bit longer. 
so that's kind of a look that I really really want to achieve this year that I don't have already and it has tortoiseshell buttons I believe which I really really love and I love the paneling of the cardigan for example so you can see with some cardigans it doesn't have that and it looks a little bit more feminine and a little bit tighter of a knit um, I really like that paneling because it adds a little bit of a boyish feel to it. I just love that cardigan and I definitely plan on getting it. The last pair of boots that I want um, from Arquette are these black slouchy knee-high boots. Primarily what I want to do with this is to have a streamlined black bottom look. The over-the-knee boots I really love but I also want something that's a little bit slouchy that gapes at the top of your knee a little bit just for a bit of a casual effortless vibe. In my head I'm thinking the Arquette oversized wool jumper with a black mini skirt and kind of higher denier tights with the slouchy boots just to kind of give a little bit of a dimension to the winter outfit, still streamlined enough because they're all black in the bottom. What that does, in my opinion, is just streamline, streamlines your whole entire bottom half so that it looks like one long kind of thing. But yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to achieve and I definitely wanted a wide shaft boot so that it has the slouchy feel. The last clothing item that I have that I want to purchase is a maxi black coat. And I don't mean just a long coat that usually hits either below or right above the knee. I want something that goes all the way to the ankles. And that is surprisingly difficult to find. A lot of places that I've looked at, for example, Sandro, Maj, H&M, Zara, all of the coats usually hit mid knee or be right below the knee and what I want is obviously ankle length. So I found two retailers that actually did it and hopefully maybe this is a trend so that more retailers will come up with it. But Weekday has one that has larger lapels and a thicker belt and it looks a little bit more structured on the website than the other one which is by Cause which is what I have my eye on and it's called the Wool Mix Belted Coat. I think it's around 69% wool and then something else, polyamide, which I think would be really warm, <laughs> hopefully. But what I love about the Cause one is that the lapel is a little bit smaller, so it's less dramatic of a collar than the weekday one. I do have to try on the weekday one because sorry if the angle is a little bit different, I had to change the battery. I think I just finished talking about my Wool Mix coat that I really love. Essentially, I just wanted something that was really over oversized, casual, cozy, but re yet really basic, so black color obviously, and I wanted the maxi length just because I wanted it to kind of skim the very very bottom of my shoe slash trousers for that kind of a layered bottom look, but very streamlined on the top. And the very very last thing that I wanted to add to my wardrobe is actually a jewelry piece. So I was looking online for kind of cocktail rings, I got an idea off of this um, jewelry Instagram page that I follow called erstwhile I think and they do really really extravagant vintage looking old mine cut old European cut jewelry pieces and I just kind of wanted that as a fashion piece but I wanted a colored gemstone to add that pop of color that I was talking about into my winter wardrobe so I went on Etsy and found one that is really really gorgeous and I'm going to get the gold for male one which is gold plating on top of sterling silver which in my opinion is better quality than gold filled which is um, gold plating on top of brass so yeah I, I wanted that and then the one that I want is an emerald it's not my birthstone or anything I'm born in August so it's a peridot for me but I don't like peridot <laughs> so I'm gonna go for an emerald um, I love that deep green color these are lab grown jewels so that's why they're a little bit on the cheaper side as well but with two kind of side crystals I believe it's really vintage Vintage looking really elegant looking and really kind of statement so in my head I'm envisioning you know for example I have my usual rings that I wear all the time but you know underneath my jumper this could just leak out a little bit like this and I just think you know in the winter time it's just quite like beautiful quite elegant but also quite understated to have a statement kind of ring jut out through your jumpers and things like that that's it, I think, for the things that I want to add to my autumn winter wardrobe and the things that I acquired lately for the season. It is quite a bit of shoes. I, I have to admit that I know that it's excessive, but I love shoes. I'm passionate about shoes. I remember being really young and wanting my Barbie sandals. Like, that's just long, long ago. But, you know, I've always been looking at shoes, and I just think shoes elevate 
the outfit and it's such an integral part of your wardrobe do let me know if you have any questions about the sizing for example for the things that i purchased and i am looking to do a review video at the end of the season to see how actually realistic i was or how frivolous i was being hope you found this video helpful i hope it gave you some inspiration for the things that you're aiming for for this season again i would very very highly recommend writing down a list it just visualizes your wants me that just makes it seem a bit more real and a bit more attainable and also organize my thoughts a little bit instead of i want this i want this i want this every time i see on an instagram for example so yeah thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye